Previously on the bill. Tell me you're not hooked now. Mm, ask me again in the morning. Oh, you're not. Uh, no joy. Is there or isn't there a lead on the Colombian deal? It's happening. So, I'm going to take a little trip. Can you come with me? My mum, Julie Land, has been knocking for ages and I can't get an answer. Right, mate, just calm Something's down. Wrong, yeah? I know it. So she's definitely inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't got a key? No. Mrs. Landis! Is anyone here? Mum! In here! Mrs. Landis, can you hear me? Sir so Oscar from 543, ambulance required to 57 Glanville Street, female with serious head injuries. Over. There's a pulse, but it's very faint. <coughs> Five four three. Four three all received. Welcome back. <coughs> Where's Zern? He's due back from holiday today, isn't he? Believe so. Serious and organised crime are on the way over. We've got more intelligence on Christian Shaw, Paul Askew, and the Colombian drugs deal. Do we know what? No, not yet. Well, we need Zane up to speed double quick. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have to tell him he's away on some jolly. You know what these soccer boys are like. Last time they were here, it was all we could do to keep Son Hill on the case. He's due in, isn't he? Well, he better be good. Gov, a serious assault on Glanville Street. A woman was attacked in her home. Motive is possibly sexual. One way to the hospital, but it doesn't look good. Okay, go down there, check CCTV, organise the door to door. Mickey, get Stuart to check the sexual offenders list, see what he can find out. Get that sent off. Sexual assault? Uh, possibly, sir, yeah. Then you go too, Neil. I want a senior officer. I'm a bit tied up here today, sir. Yes, I know, but if there are two issues that really concern the public right now, it's burglary and sexual assault. These are the things we need to impress on if we're going to ensure Sun Hill's survival. Last thing anyone needs is a sex attacker on the brow. Sir? Oh, and Neil, get Zane in here, will you? I'm really late for work. I'll just tell them that the plane back was delayed. Mm -hmm. The truth is, I couldn't get here fast enough. Uh -huh. You've just been locked in a hotel room with me for two weeks. Aren't you sick of me by now? Well, it was only 12 days, remember? The first and the last day, I was on my own. Mm. Patient, just one more deal. And I'll shut up the business. And we're off to South America in style. Travelling together, though, this time. You know, I get lonely on my own. <laughs> Long time no see. You miss me? No. It's a nice tan. You been away too? Mm hmm. Anywhere nice? Italy. Now, that wouldn't be Barcelona, Italy, by any chance, would it? It's just strange you two have got matching tans. It's a big sun. It's a big sun. Oh, yeah, that's very good. We were going to tell you. We didn't think it was important. You didn't think it was important? You two go swanning off around the world while I'm stuck here trying to sort out the six million quid deal of our lives. We thought you could handle it. We? How very touching. You should have told me. It must have slipped our minds. What, not even a postcard? Next time I bring you a stick of rock. Yeah, well, you can take your stick of rock and shove it where your big sun don't shine, copper boy. That's why you two were playing ping pong. Muggins here has decided that uh, we don't need you anymore. As far as I'm concerned, your history. You find him! You find whoever did this! He's a sick bastard! I'll kill him! Mum! Try and stay calm. That's Rob, her son. Just got back from Nice this morning. He's been involved in a chess tournament over there. How bad is she? She's got a pretty serious head injury. Lost a lot of blood. No sign of the weapon yet. We've done a search of the front garden and back garden, but nothing. Okay. Do we know when it happened? Well, paramedics couldn't tell, but probably sometime last night. CSE are on their way, so we're going to do a door-to-door -door search, see if anyone saw anything. What do you do, Robert Bank? Who kicked the door down? I did. We called 999 and it come through to us. Any other key? No. Right, nice one, man. You don't mind going to the hospital, do you? Me and Emma are going to do a door-to-door. -door. Oh, that's nice of you both. What's that supposed to mean? We haven't wasted any time in seeing her, have you? Hi, Emma. It's good to have you back. Thanks. <laughs> it's a rough start to the year, though, isn't it? This time yesterday, I was skiing in Colorado. All right for some. Anything happened while I've been away? No, nothing much. Father Christmas came and went. Trafalgar Square got trashed. Oh, and they might be closing Sun Hill. What? Zane's been across everything so far. I keep the police off your back. Is that a fact? 
Because from where I'm standing, they know nothing. They still think Jose's deal's going down on the 14th of March. And I gave you that information. I mean, come on, Paul, it's still useful to know what they're thinking. And what about all the other things that I've done for you in the past? And you were well paid for them. This is mine and Kristen's deal, always was. It's me and her who will take delivery of the drugs from Jose and our contacts that have sourced a buyer. Now, if she's mad enough to give you part of her cut, that's her business. The way I see it, you are just one more complication I don't need. I know a lot about you, Paul. Your contacts, your operation. Are you threatening me? Is that what you're doing? Do us a favour, you'll never grasp me up. How could you, eh? Well, I've got a tape recording of you tipping us off, remember? And I'll tell you what, Zane. Whatever you think about me, you are not stupid enough to cross the Colombians. Comprende? Oh, the sec, don't walk Get away from me. Oh. Let him go. Let him go. Look at me. Maybe this isn't such a bad thing. How do you figure that? If you lie low for a bit, play the straight cop, then there's nothing linking you to this deal. All the better. Yeah, OK. OK. I've got to go. I'll see you later. Hey, Zane. It's nice to have you back, man. Thanks, man. Nice to see you. Cheers. I need to ask you something. It's about Paul. Mm -hmm. Look, he's got a tape of me tipping him in Christmas off about Sun Hill. He's trying to blackmail me with it. And what do you want me to do about that? I need that tape, Chess. Can you get it for me? <sighs> no way. I, I, I can't get caught doing something like that, Zane. What do you think I'm crazy? Oh, come on, look, Chess, I'll make it worth your while. Please, come on, it's really oh, important right, to me. Right. Thank you. Are you still here? I'll see you later, all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Our man broke in here, forced the window. See us here checking the tool mark, looking for finger and footprints. Access from the garden roof. The rest of the house is undisturbed. So is the garden. Excessive blood splatter would indicate that she was hit from behind. So he waits for her to walk in here, then he hits her with... We don't know what. She falls to the ground and so on. The front door's in a latch. She could have walked straight out. You don't look convinced. This is Rob Landis, right? The one with the car. He's worried for his mum. He doesn't smash the window. He doesn't come through the door. If it was my mum, I'd kick the door down. I'd do anything. Do you know I might have got something from the sex offenders register. Gary Caldwell lives three streets away from Mrs. Landis. I'm at his workplace now. So what's the ammo? Oh, Gary Caldwell, please. Stand in there. Well, that sounds identical. Yeah, Caldwell was convicted after attacking a girl at home alone. And get this, he got in through the landing window. Gary Caldwell? Yes? D.S. Turner, Sunhill Police. Ooh. I'd like to ask you a few questions about... Well, I was wondering you lot were going to turn up. Neil, Zane. Phil's dealing with the Gov. The superintendent's assignment to this Landis case. He should have been here an hour ago. Go on. Uh, well, five years ago, Caldwell broke into the house of a young woman. Now, she woke up to find him standing at the end of her bed. Charming. Yeah, but nothing actually happened. But three years later, he takes it one step further. Now, this time, he breaks in through the landing window, threatens a young woman with a hammer, tells her he's going to rape her. But then he got disturbed by her flatmate coming home, so he ran off before any sexual assault could take place. But he got two years for that. So this time, he's gone even further again. Well, exactly. Where does Caldwell say he was? Well, he reckons he was in some bar all night, but we're checking it out. OK. Let's go and see the whites of his eyes. Now, Gary, you seemed to be expecting me at the DIY store earlier. Why was that? The local rag ran a piece of me when I first got out of Nick, and that was that. Well, someone breaks wind now and fingers start pointing at me. How did you know there was an incident today? DS Turner could have been there to talk to you about anything. One of the guys in plumbing was winding me up about it before you got there. It was kicking off on his way in. Neighbour said it was a sex attack. He couldn't resist having a pop at me. I said I knew nothing about it. Is that right? See, it's a bit of a coincidence, the attack happening right by your place of work, though, isn't it? And you do have history, Gary. Tell us about Anne-Marie Carter, the girl you tried to sexually assault three years ago. Now, you got disturbed with Anne-Marie, didn't you? I was never going to do anything. Right, but I bet you still think about it, though, don't you? See, is that what it is with you, Gary? Fantasizing. Is that why the first time round you just stood at the end of Sally Hardwick's bed? Do you recall the weapon you had in your hand that night? What was it? It was, it was a hammer, wasn't it? And with both girls, you climbed in through an upstairs window, isn't that right? So? Well, the crime we're investigating, Gary. The victim was attacked from behind by a heavy object, which could have been a hammer, by someone who climbed in through an upstairs window. Look, I didn't do it! No, it wasn't me! I wasn't there! Sit down, Gary. Look, you've got to believe me. I didn't Gary, do it! Gary, sit down! 
Look, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. Where the hell have you been today? Oh, sorry, Gov. My plane was delayed. Any Colombians on it? No, I don't think so. Why? Well, a lot's happened since you've been away. Your holiday's well and truly over. Good of you to turn up. Do you see that here? Right, gentlemen, I think you both know Officer Swift from soccer. Right, two things we need to discuss. First up, Eva Garcia, the drug mule who was beaten up by Jose Alvarez, is about to be released from hospital. Now, hold on a minute. I told Jose that she was dead. If he finds out otherwise, I'm going to be blown out of the water. Which is why we're going to keep her in a safe house until all of this is done. As for your cover being blown, that brings me to the second point. Your cover isn't doing us much good at the moment. What's that supposed to mean? We've had a tip-off that the date of the Alvarez deal is being brought forward. Our intelligence suggests that the drop is happening much sooner than expected. How much sooner? Within the next 24 hours. Did you have any idea? Look, we need DC Nadir to be more effective, otherwise what is the point? And we need to know, Officer Swift, that your intelligence is correct. There's no point in us acting on half-cock information. Well, it's better than no information at all. I'll find out what's happening. I hope so. Because what we need to know, as a matter of urgency, is exactly when... When and where the deal is taking place, I know. I needn't stress how important this is. No, sir. You needn't. Hello, mate. Good to see you, mate. So, how's the Zane in Spain? Very good. Yeah, for a moment there, we thought you weren't going to turn up. Where's my present? Yeah, great, Mum. Listen, man, I've got to go. I'll catch up with you later, all right? Caldwell's alibi checks out. The owner of the bar where he says he was spending the evening backs him up. Is he sure? Well, he's vague, but his CCTV is, and he showed me it. Now, Caldwell was sat there on his own from opening till closing. Right, we'd better bail him. Bail who? I was told you had somebody in custody. Yeah, Gary Caldwell, sir. We haven't got enough on him. Then why did you arrest him? We haven't got time to waste on this case. Well, I can assure you, sir, we're covering all the bases. I should hope so. Sir, Governor, I spoke to him and Will, also inquired about the Landis family. I reckon we check out the son, you know, Rob. There's something about him that doesn't add up. What? Well, he didn't have a key to the place. He didn't keep the door down. He also told Will and Emma that he was playing at a chess tournament in Nice. Apparently he was staying at an exclusive hotel for nothing because he's the budding Grand Master. And? Well, it's a load of rubbish. He was never playing the chess tournament at all. He's just a hanger-on. He also got kicked out of the hotel because his credit card got rejected. The general manager said he kicked up quite a fuss. But he was out of the country when his mum was attacked. So he said. I mean, he could have come back earlier. Phil, check the airline. It'll be on the manifest if he came back this morning. Unless he's Oedipus, why is he going to sexually assault his own mother? Well, that's just it. The hospital rang and said Jeannie Landis wasn't actually sexually assaulted. Not that the attacker was going to rape her, but something happened to stop him. Well, that could fit with Gary Caldwell, because he never actually managed to sexually assault anyone. Well, was. maybe the motive weren't sexual anyway. I mean, this kid's 18, you know what I mean? He's living the life. He's got a flashy motor. Maybe he was in it for the money. Oh, my God, that sounds a bit far-fetched to me. All right, let's check his financials, see what we can turn up. Right now, we haven't got much, so we can't rule anything out, OK? okay. I prefer Saint Tropez, but um, Nice is all right. I needed a break after splitting from my girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. No, no, don't be. It was me that dumped her. I mean, Stacey's all right for a bit of fun, but she's not exactly a brain of Britain. She's great with cuticles, though. I'll give her that. She did um, manicures at Carmel and more. Excuse me. Yeah. How's Mrs. Landis doing? No, not good. She's in a coma. The doctors can't say when or if she'll regain consciousness. He seems to have calmed down a bit. Oh, he will not stop talking. Mainly about Stacey, his ex-girlfriend from Karma Amour. Look, I swear, if it wasn't for where we were, he'd be coming on to me. Well, I'm DC Webb from Sunil. I'm ever so sorry. Is it OK if I ask you a few questions? I'm far away. You told PC Hinckley and PC Fletcher that you were trying to call your mum. Well, I knew something's wrong because she's normally at home and she was meant to meet me at the airport. I just dumped my stuff at my flat and went straight over. You didn't have a key? Mum usually keeps a spare in the garage, but she stopped recently. I think she's worried about the house being overlooked. I just hadn't got round to getting me one cut. You didn't think you're trying to break in yourself or...? I was worried what I might find. OK. How old are you, Rob? 18. It's just you seem a bit young to be travelling the world and having your own flat. I mean, I saw your motor outside. <laughs> no, it's cool, isn't it? No, my dad died and left me some cash. But I, I paid for the deposit on the mortgage myself. When I was uh, still at school, I ran my own business, recycling computers. What do you do now? I'm inventing biodegradable plastics for a company called Prozone. The world's biggest issue is the environment. The world's biggest threat is plastics. 
So I'm going to square the circle, solve the problem, be as rich as Croesus. He was a Greek god, by the way. Really? He's worth his weight. Only if he's getting us intelligence that we can't get elsewhere. Oh, perhaps you've forgotten, you know, for all soccer's tip-offs, we're still relying on our man to find the crucial information. And Sam will get us that information, trust me. Right. And what's that supposed to mean? Look, both of you, can we cut out the testosterone? Sunhill wants a result as much as soccer, but we're not going to get it unless we all pull together. You want to see me, sir? Yes, it's to do with the Alvarez case. Right. We need to assign someone to help Eva Garcia move from St. Hugh's to a safe house. Now, I've had a word with Inspector Gold, and she recommends Honey. Right. What do you need me to do? Well, Honey is up at St. Hugh's with Landis, I believe. Now, she's not to know the details of the Alvarez case, but I want you to introduce her to Eva. Well, I'm a bit tied up with the Landis case myself, sir. Yes, but you know Eva, so you're the best person to introduce them. Landis is at the hospital anyway, so you can kill two birds with one stone. Unless you find multitasking a problem, Neil. Any change? None. Funny, I need to ask your help with something. CID and Soccer are working together on a drugs raid and we need to place someone in a safe house for a few days. Her name's Eva Garcia. I met her briefly on another case. Right. Well, she's been here until now. We need someone to spend a bit of time with her, help her settle in. Yeah, I'll give it a go. I am going on holiday the day after tomorrow, though. Well, hopefully we won't need to keep her hidden any longer than that. I can't tell you much about the case and you mustn't talk to anyone about Eva. How's your Spanish? Terrible. Great. Shouldn't you be out there trying to find whoever did this? Well, we're doing all we can. I'm not entirely sure of the motive at the moment. The motive is sex. She wasn't actually sexually assaulted. Well, he must have been disturbed in the act. Unless he wanted us to think there was a sexual element to the attack, when in fact there wasn't. I'm going to go and get some rest. I'm a bit jet -lagged. From Nice? I've come to wish you luck. So I can know that Jose is handing over the drugs tomorrow. And as you know. Well, like I said, I've got to make the works there. Well, stick your nose in, did you? No, didn't have to. Soccer are crawling all over Sun Hill. And what else do they know? What would I know? Glass, please, Chez. I mean, I'm just some dumb cop. Waste of space. Completely useless, aren't I? Well, who needs who now, Paul? Say. Soccer know it's happening tomorrow. Did you? No. I mean, Paul told me after you left. I, I was going to call you. Maybe we should have bought the whole thing. It's too late. We pull out now, we're dead. Let me help you, then. What do you suggest? Hello, Eva. Como estás? No good. Quiero mi libertad. I want to go home. I know, I know. Eva, quisiera presentarte PC Honey Harmon. Hello. You won't remember, but we did meet a while ago. Just briefly. She's Spanish, not deaf. Do you speak any of the lingo? Uh, donde está el caballo? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the horse? <laughs> okay, look, uh, today, Eva, we need to take you to a safe house. Uh, Casa Securitas. No. Quiero libertad. Quiero ver mi familia. Well, she says she wants to see her family. Yeah, I got that. Look, come on, let's get you out of here and you can tell me all about them. It'll be fun, just us girls. You'll be fine, it'll just be for a few days. It'll be okay. I promise. Prometo? I can feed them a dummy location, but we need to be clever about how we do it. it can't come directly from me. Well, I don't think they're going to believe me or Crystal. They'll believe Chess. He's had a checkered pass. Sunday will know all about him. I say he's come to me with some information. Soccer pay him a visit. Chess plays hard to get, milks it for all it's worth, and then gives them a location. 
Now you tell me when and where the drop's happening. Oh, you don't need to know. All you need is chairs to give my dummy location. Fine, forget about it. Zane! Yes. Paul? I cannot see why he needs to know. Because Sokka obviously have access to some pretty good intelligence. If I don't know the real drop location, I can't divert them from it if it becomes a possibility. I have to convince them the location I give them is 100% accurate, so they don't go covering any other bases. Is that clear enough for you, Paul, or do you want me to draw you some pictures? Tomorrow, 4 p.m. Bonham Wharf. Good. Chase will tell them Jamaica Docks. It's the other side of town. Anything from forensics, Phil? Nothing. What about the weapon? Uh, we've still got uniform combing Glanville Street. Anything from the airline on Landers' flight? Yeah, still checking, but don't hold your breath. It's a mare getting through. <sighs> Nothing to write home about, then. Uh, maybe there is, Gov. I just spoke to Rob Landis' employers. He works for a biochemical company called Prozone. Now, his job, according to him, involves saving the world on account of him being a bit of a hot shot. Don't tell me. It isn't true. Exactly. I just spoke to one of his line managers. The only reason they took him on is because his mother twisted their arm. How could his mum have an influence? His old man used to work there, Rob Landis Sr. Now, he was a very well-respected biochemist, but at one stage was tipped for a Nobel Prize. Rob Landis Jr., a research assistant. So he exaggerates his talent along with 10 million others? Yeah, but it lends credence to a possible motive, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, Landis don't earn much money, but he runs around as if he's a yeah, bit of a playboy. Like you know, since when did scientists earn a lot of money? His old man's been dead about eight years, his life insurance can't go on forever. So we've got a possible motive and we're building a picture so of Landis as a, a fantasist. Well, it doesn't mean he attacked his own mother. But there's something disconnected about him. I mean, you saw what he was like with us at the scene. He's shouting and bawling at us, telling us to find whoever it was who did it. Then at the hospital, he's all over honey, and he's talking to me about biodegradable plastics. I mean... OK, so he's cocky and he's economical with the truth, but this is just speculation. Yeah, nothing wrong with self-confidence. Thanks. Yeah, speak for yourself, Stu. How was, Phil? Gov, that was the airline check. Uh, the first flight out of Nice got into the UK at 7.52 this morning. Robert Landis was on it, just like he said he was. See, alibi checks out. Right. We need to find that murder weapon. She's needing an ace deck type. Whatever he did it with, he probably chucked in the canal. Mate, it's good exercise for you. 99% perspiration and all that. The 1% inspiration I find difficult. How are you doing? Jet lag kicked in yet? About an hour ago. I was already aching from skiing, so bending down, not really helping. Hang on in there, you. So, is Matthew in today? Yeah, he rolled out of bed. How was your holiday? Fun? Yeah, it's fab. How's things between you and Honey? Love's young dream, is it? Nah, no, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Well, as long as she knows that, sounds like the perfect arrangement. Yeah, you're missing single life then, are you? Hang on a minute. the weapon, sir. There's a hammer, and we're pursuing both Landis and Caldwell as possible suspects. We've ruled Caldwell out. Has he got an alibi? Yes, sir, but I'm waiting on the definitive timing of the attack. Yeah, Caldwell always used a hammer in a previous attack, sir. Well, then why aren't we bringing him in? Well, until we get the prints, sir, it's just circumstantial. That's going to look great, isn't it? We've let him go, and now we've got to bring him in again. We've well, got the weapon now, so I expect a result pronto. Gov, there are loads of airlines that fly to Nice. I only checked the first one that he flew out. That would take a lot of time to check. Landis them. might have been able to fly back first thing this morning and commit a crime. You boys don't give up, do you? It's called well we should be double checking. He's got an alibi, Stuart. Why don't you let it go? Hang on, hang on. Are you saying that he could have checked out of his hotel room in Nice? Yeah, then he immediately booked a return ticket from Nice to the UK. Then he flies over here and carries out the assault. We don't know what time Gina was attacked. It could have been early in the evening. If it was as late as eight or nine, he could have got the last flight back to Nice. Yeah, he lands, he freshens up, gets the original ticket and flies on the first flight back in the morning. Bang, there's your alibi. Oh, thank you, Hercule Poirot. It's all so far-fetched, Gov. I mean, the timeline confusion works just as well for Caldwell. And if the attack happened earlier, he could have committed the crime before he went to the bar. Why would Landers go to such lengths? Give me him, Gov. He needs the money. And he thinks he's cleverer than us. His life's a complete fantasy. He doesn't think that we're going to check out the airlines. OK, well, let's just get on to it, shall we? And keep an open mind with both of them. Stuart, you keep digging on Caldwell, all right? Yeah. I've checked out his act as well. We'll see what she's got to say. Good. Keep me informed. Yeah. If this is about the tape, I haven't got it yet. It's not about the tape. It's something else. Yeah, well, come on. Spit it out. Never known you to be stuck for words before. All right. Well, first of all, you need to know Chris and I are going away for good. She's going to sell the bar and we're going to start over somewhere else. 
You're joking, right? No, I'm not. Listen, there is a major drug deal going down between Paul and Kristen and some Colombians. As soon as it's done, we're gone. It's Sun Hill and Soccer all over this. And what do you want me to do? I need to throw them off the scent by feeding them some false information about where the drop-off is taking place. You want me to do that? Suppose there's a grass? No way. I don't need you to do that, Chez. I just need for Paul and Jose to believe that you're going to. Listen, they will buy that you are a real route back to the police. I'll tell Sun Hill and Soccer myself. Won't they want to know how come you're suddenly up on Paul and Kristen's activities? All right. You remember when you first introduced me to Kristen as a bent copper on the take? I wasn't. I was undercover. You were what? Are you having a laugh? No. I've never been more serious about anything in my life. Look, when I first started, I was undercover. And then I fell in love with Kristen. But I introduced you to Kristen as a copper on the take. I lied. What do you mean you lied? You set me up. You used me. I thought we were supposed to be mates. We are mates, No, we're not Chase. mates. You don't lie to your mates. So what, all along you've just been a copper? No. No, not, not anymore. Look, I've crossed so far over the line, you wouldn't believe it. That's right, I don't believe it. I just can't get all this. What does Kristen say? She doesn't know. You are out of your depth. No, I'm not. I just no, need no, you to... No, no, no. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm out of here, oh, Zane. Come on, Chase. Back off! Thanks for coming, Stacey. There, take a seat. Someone's attacked Rob's mother. Uh, she's in hospital with a serious head injury. Is she okay? Well, we're not sure yet. That's what we're trying to find out. How long have you known Rob? About six months. Do you know his mum at all? A bit. Did they get on? Sort of. She was a bit OTT. What do you mean? <laughs> she used to go parents' evening at his school with a pen and paper to make notes on his progress. She was always talking him up in public and then having a dig in private. What about you and Rob? We weren't exactly Romeo and Juliet, if that's what you mean. He's hard to get close to. But it was fun. Did he spend a lot of money? <laughs> Loads. He must have loaned thousands. From his dad's life insurance? I didn't ask where it came from. I just used to help him spend it. <laughs> That's why he dumped me, though. Because? I called him a cheapskate, just as a joke. He was buying me what I thought was a cheap piece of bling. How am I in it cost a load? And he wasn't happy, yeah? <laughs> he dumped me on the spot. He went ballistic in the middle of the jewellers, started screaming that I was a cheap tart. How dare I show him up? How dare I doubt him? He had a real thing about it. It's his problem. <laughs> I'm well out of there. All that matters to me now is getting Kristen safely away. And I'll see to it that you're looked after. You've always been about banging up drug dealers. I just thought you'd take them for a few quid. Top up your pension, like you said. I always imagined you'd find a way to put Paul away. He's the sort of guy you used to loathe. Look, I'm just so sick of it. You move on one set of scum, you get them put away, and like that, another lot takes their place. I always planned to bust Paul and Kristen's operation. I mean, do you really think that I intended to fall in love with her? And I'd hoped that I'd be able to get her out and get Paul sent down, and believe me, I tried. But this is the only way I can see to finish it and get away with her. You love her enough to spend the rest of your life with her? Yes. Are you sure? How can you be sure about her anyway? I've known her longer than you, and I wouldn't trust her as far as I could throw her. Her and Paul were in a relationship. Their history. What if they're closer than you think? I saw them earlier. They were pretty tight. The history, Chess. You don't know that, Zane. Yes, I do. Look, are you going to help me? Why should I? Because I'm asking you. Chess, please, as a mate. Yes or no? There's enough food here to feed an army. Can we more of that hospital not here? I've got you loads of tapas-y kind of things. Uh, chorizo. Is there anything else I can get you? Music, films, magazines? No, gracias. Look, you're going to be okay here. 
You think? I know. I've cleared it with my inspector so I can be here with you all day, so you're safe. We found the weapon used in the attack on your mother. It was a hammer. We just went for fingerprints. Excellent. So you think you'll get it? hope so. It's a nice one, isn't it? Oh, that would do. For now. Until the uh, biodegradable plastics take off. There might be some time there, but given you're only a research assistant. Got to start at the bottom. Before you climb to the heights that your father reached, yeah? Heard he was tipped for a Nobel Prize. He was never nominated, actually. Did your mum have the same hopes for you? I gather she's quite a determined parent. Taking a notebook to parents this evening, keeping a written record of your progress. You know what mums are like. Yeah. Must have got up your nose, though. But why you talk things up a bit? Sorry? Well, I don't understand what you mean. Well, you were never playing in a chess tournament, were you? You were never staying free in a hotel. You're actually just a low-level research assistant, not a world-beating philanthropist. And as far as the computer recycling business goes, I phoned a school. It was more of a stall at an open day, wasn't it? Everyone exaggerates. I don't. Not do I, actually. Well, maybe you've got no imagination. Well, you clearly like to live the high life, Rob, but I can't imagine being a research assistant pays top dollar, does it? What's this got to do with my mother? We're trying to find out who assaulted her. Are you saying that I did? I didn't say that. Did you, Mickey? No. Man is just definitely on a back foot. So we're saying, what are we saying? That he attacks his own mother, then makes it look like sexual assault by a stranger? Immediately distances himself from it. Leaves the country, then turns around and comes straight back. Rings the police, make sure we're there when he finds his mother. Exactly. Kicks off with a load of theatrics, so we know he's got it. Yeah, well, all possible, Mickey. We just need evidence. Any news from the airline, please? No, not yet, Doug. Never mind the airline, Doug. Just had word from forensics. Fingerprints all over the hammer. Gary Caldwell's. Hang on, what about his alibi? No, see, I checked. Your dopey bar manager's not on top of his security. Now, the CCTV is out of date. The tapes that he showed you are from two nights ago. I checked last night's. No Caldwell. OK. Let's get Caldwell in. So where were you really last night, Gary? Because we now know for a fact that you weren't in that bar. I was at home. No, no, see, you're going to have to do better than that. Because we found a hammer that was used in an attack that's got your prints all over it. So how do you explain that? I can't. I mean, what do you want me to say? The truth. You weren't really at home last night, were you? No, but... No, so where were you? I was out walking. I mean, that's what I do. I walk the streets and I think. Think about what? Doing things to people. I want to stop myself, but I can't. What kind of things? Sexual things. So maybe last night you couldn't stop yourself. And instead of just thinking about it, you actually went and did it, didn't okay, you? Okay, stop! I did it. I, I, I attacked that woman in her house on Glanville Street. I got in through the window on the landing. And I hit her with a hammer. OK. Which on the Glanville Street was it? Was it down by the electricity pilots? Yeah. Right, interview suspended. 1355. Well, I don't buy it. Something's not right. Like what? The ammo fits. He knows key details and he just confessed. All he said is stuff he could have heard earlier. No, no. He mentioned the street name. We didn't tell him that. He said that someone at the DIY store told him about the attack. They could have easily mentioned the street name. And also, Jeannie Landis lives at the other end of Glanville Street. No one near the pilots. God, he's confused. The two right is confused. I'm going to take over the interview. How old was the victim? Uh, in her twenties, I think. I I'm not sure it was dark. I wasn't really looking at her face. What did you do with the hammer? Uh, don't remember. Threw it in a bin, I think. Did you have sex with her? Yes. Yes, I did. You're lying. There was no sexual assault here. And the victim was in her fifties. What is this? Some kind of sick fantasy? Is that it? What are you doing? What do you want? Peace. Peace from you lot. Peace from the people I work with. Peace from everyone. Outside, I'm a freak. Inside, I wasn't. So you just want to go back to prison, is that what it is? This is my life. 
Gary, did you have anything to do with the assault that took place on Glanville Street last night? No. Can you explain how your fingerprints are all over the hammer? I don't know. But you'd have to charge me, wouldn't you? I mean, it's evidence. Done. Right, according to the flight manifests of Gallic Air, Rob Landis flew out of Nice two days ago back to the UK. He then caught the last flight back there last night. So he was in the country. But that doesn't alter the fact that Colwell's prints are all over the hammer. I've got a theory about that. Can you give me about 20 minutes before I make an idiot of myself? Yeah. Stuart. I spoke to one of the soccer boys earlier. He said that Kristen Shaw flew out of the country recently too. So I gather. I don't suppose you two hooked up, maybe. <laughs> Do me a favour, I don't take the job that seriously. Good. Because for a moment now I thought you might have been getting in a bit too deep. But we checked it out. And apparently Kristen flew into Greece, whereas you flew into Spain, didn't you? Mm-hmm. You're checking up on me, Phil. So I was worried about you. You wouldn't be the first undercover cop to go native. I'm fine, man. It's like I said, I'm just using you. As long as she's not using you. <sighs> no way. And as long as you don't go trust in her. Because it's going to get a lot tougher, you know that. You're going to have to arrest her. I can't wait. So how come you got into trouble? El dinero, money, for my family, mama, brother. No trabajo, no work. Very poor, I think. I make different. Oh, come on. It'll be okay. It'll all work out. No, not for me. I wish I like you. Ugh, you don't want to be like me. My life's all over the place. Your boyfriend? Well, maybe. There is somebody. I like him, but I don't think he like me. He's stupid. <laughs> Sweet. You must make life great. You must, um, carpe diem? Seize the day. Now that I understand. Yeah, this is yesterday morning. That's Landis in a black coat. Makes sure his hands are occupied, gets Coldwell to help him. That explains the fingerprints. We've got Landis in the country when he said he wasn't. Framing Coldwell. He staged the whole thing using Coldwell's MO so he could lead us to him, so he could get his hands on his mum's money. So how did he know that Coldwell had form? The paper did a story on him. Good work. It's nice one. Mm -hmm. Sorry to bother you again. We've had a bit of a breakthrough. About time. Robert Landis, I'm arresting you on suspicion of assaulting your mother, Jeannie Landis. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Yeah. Zane, so what you got for us? I just wanted to let you know that I haven't found anything else out yet. I'm going to need a little more time, that's all. Financials have come through on Landis. Skin, yeah? No, wrong, he's loaded. What? His dad set up a trust fund for him. It came to him when he was 18. Now, dad invented a little test tube gizmo. He's patented it, and basically every laboratory in the world has one, so the money's just flooded in. What about Jeannie Landis? Well, apparently, she's leaving her money to charity. Presumably, because she doesn't think Rob needs it. Right, well, bad girls are most of them. Okay, let's go. Oh, all alone now, are we? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, fine. Really enjoying my special duties, actually. Yeah? And how about your mood? Still give me the cold shoulder, cos Emma's back? No. Maybe. Look, now you mention it, I do feel like a bit of a gooseberry around you two. But it shouldn't be like that, should it? It should be the other way around. What, me feeling like gooseberry? You know what I mean. Look, we both got leave coming up. Why don't we go away together? Uh, yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah, it'd be nice, just the two of us. Emma and Matt obviously had a good time, so can we. Well, my aunt's got a place in North Wales. I mean, we could always go there for the weekend. North Wales? I was thinking of somewhere a little bit more exotic. How about Tenerife for two weeks? Um, yeah. I'll just check that I've got some leave, though, first, yeah? Good. All right. Bye, honey. Okay. 
So, probably paradise. Well, I don't know about paradise, but honey wants me to go on holiday with her. And you're grumbling because? I don't know, I just don't know if I'm as into her as she is me, you know? Oh, yeah, no. I hate it when that happens. When I've got it open tomorrow, you'll all get paid the same problem. It's um, the last chance you can do it. Are you okay? She looked terrible. Did you feed them the decoy drop location? I just need to check. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't know about this deal being brought forward? I told you. Paul only told me this morning. It's tomorrow, Bottom Wharf. Why? If you knew, you would have told me, right? Of course. Zane, what is this? How are things with Paul? Well, he's still pretty jumpy about the deal. That's not what I mean. How are things between you and Paul? Why are you asking me? I hear you're still pretty tight. Meaning? Meaning how tight? I have to keep him sweet. I have to keep in with him. He doesn't like you, Zane, and he really didn't like that I went away with you. Now, I don't need any added friction. I want this to go off without any complications, so I play nice. You sure that's all it is? I can't believe you're asking me this. What about the last two weeks? Do you think that was an act? Just answer me. I won't answer you. I love you, Zane, but it's your choice whether you believe me or not. It's up to you. Well, we know you lie for a living. We know you are in the country when your mother was assaulted. And we've got CCTV images of you in the DIY store getting Cold Oil's fingerprints on the weapon. And we know you read articles on Gary Colwell in the local paper outlining the way he operated. So? So? It doesn't look that good, does it? Look, guys, I'm trying to cooperate here, but this is all stuff and nonsense. It's pure speculation. You don't really have any proof, do you? Well, I'll put it this way. I've been racking my brains, all right? Now, bearing in mind, I ain't as clever as you. But I can't think of an explanation why you'd fly to Nice last night and then fly back first thing, unless it was to get an alibi. I collect air miles. And I'm Father Christmas. So tell me about the row you had in the hotel in Nice. Couldn't afford to pay your bill? I earn more interest in a month than you'll earn in a lifetime. Credit card company screwed up, that's all. I paid for my car on it and they put a block on the card as a precaution while the car went through. And I've told them not to do it again or I'll switch banks. So why did it kick off? You don't like showed up, do you? What's that got to do with anything? Where does this come from? That's what I want to know. You're trying to live up to the memory of your father, but you just can't cut it. Is that what this is about? No. Your mother clearly wanted you to match his achievements, and you had every opportunity, didn't you? You had the money, and you had the job. Well, you nearly had the job. Sounds like he was quite a man, your father. He was nothing special. He was just a boffin. Couldn't do half the things I can do. Like what? Play chess? Drive a fast car? And the perfect murder? You was always living in the shadow of your old man, wouldn't you? Everywhere you went, every penny you spent. I mean, I feel sorry for you. You didn't even get your own name. Just lay off, OK? And as far as your mum goes, she wouldn't play ball either, would she, eh? She just wouldn't die. So you're really not that clever, are you? Like you'd know. What happens if your mother comes around? What is she going to think of you? I don't care what she thinks. She'd be disappointed, though, wouldn't she? I said I don't care. After everything she's done for you? She's done nothing. All her support. All of her nagging, more like. She lived her life for you, Rob. She hasn't lived her life for me. She ruined my life. Oh, she rots in hell. She deserves to die. Why? She's always on at me. On at me the whole time. Your father this, your father that. I'm glad I hurt her. I hope the witch dies. Mickey, nice work. But obviously I thought we'd land this from the beginning. Of course you did, Stu. Cheers anyway. Listen, that could have been even war for a while there. Well done, you. I gather we got our man. Yes, we did, sir. Knew you would. Good work. I'll mention it. Zen. Your tip-off was right. The drugs are already in the country and in transit. Yeah, we knew all that. What else have you got? The time and the date of the handover? Tomorrow. Four o'clock. Where? Did you make it, docs? Well done. Thanks, Gav. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you, sir. That's right, that's right.
time on The Bill. Quick, upstairs, in the bedroom, quick! Is it too late to go back? That's the one you gave me. Yeah, I know it's bad, man. It's, but I need to take it back. 